it's Anya here from OurGabledHome.com and this is a really special video because I have my husband Brian in here and usually he's behind the camera and he's one of my biggest supporters in every which way and this is really fun because we're doing this video together to show you guys how to cold smoke salmon. He has perfected a recipe of cold smoked salmon that is so good that we need to share it and this is what we're doing in this video. It's so fresh, it was caught on October 8th, and it was packaged and frozen before it got rigor mortis, so within a few hours of being caught. It was kept at a low temperature to kill any parasites, and now it's been thawed, and I'm gonna add salt to it to cure it. 130 grams, okay, so. On there and now I'm going to cut it open and wash it Cramps. I'm going to put the fish back in. I'm going to weigh out. It's not, you want to use something that's not iodized. Pour that in right away here. Just to help distribute it, move it around like that. I put the salt in first because that's the most important ingredient here. The sugar is, is more for flavoring. We're going to put the same amount of sugar in. So it's a one-to-one -one mixture. Twelve percent by weight. Reality, it, it doesn't suck up a lot of sugar. You don't, you don't notice that whole lot. You notice it compared to no sugar, but um, I like having a, a, just a little tinge of sweetness. And I'm just going to put that right on top of it. Spread it out a little bit. And then I'm going to go to my vacuum sealer and vacuum seal it. And there we have it. And for how long do you soak that? Um, all I'm trying to do is get it to suck up the water and then it'll get mushy but it might take a few hours to do that I usually let it sit overnight and then in the morning I'll add more water because it's going to suck up probably all this water and 
basically what we're trying to do is to soften it up so they're right now they're just compressed it's compressed sawdust their water will soften it up make it expand make them fall apart and then we have to dry it to get the dry sawdust to, to smoke use for the smoker and you just want to break them apart You'll feel that there's some uh, little hard balls in there, so it's worth letting it sit a little longer. You can see it's turned into wet sawdust. Squeeze out the water. We're going to spread it out, leave it in the sun for a few days dry out. It's got to be real dry so it can smolder in the smoker. The reason we need sawdust is because we want to have a smoldering um, fire that produces smoke over a long period of time without having to manage the smoker all the time. We can get two days worth of uh, smoke without managing it. If it's dry and we use a big enough uh, tray for it. Okay, so this is after two days. You spread it out. And you want to do this typically in warm months, months, obviously. So I dry my sawdust summer, spring, fall. And I typically do my smoking in the winter when the temperatures are cool because we're doing cold smoke. So every once in a while, I uh, mix it up, get some wet sawdust on the top to dry out. And this should be a few days of drying. But it's... You'll see it's worth it. It produces a, you get a lot of smoking sessions out of this now. So here's the, uh, the sawdust from the pellets that we broke up with the water and then dried out. This is after about four days in the sun for the most part. And I mix it around, mix it around every once in a while to make sure the wet areas are exposed. And it's pretty dry. You need it dry, otherwise it won't smolder well. So here is the uh, piece of fish that we vacuum sealed with the 12% by weight salt and sugar uh, combination. Um, we're gonna, it, what you'll find is that after a few days, after a couple days sitting in this in the fridge, um, it is a little stiffer and that's because of the dehydration. We're seeing all the water that was pulled out of the, the, the uh, flesh um, and it's not completely, the sugar at least, is not completely um, dissolved. So it's a pretty much a saturated solution. Um, I'm going to cut it open and we're going to measure how much uh, weight uh, it, it was reduced by. I'm guessing it's about 12% also. So we'll do that, cut it open. Again, we're going to wash it. What happens is the skin is a little bit, um, it gets a little tough with this dehydration. I do it for two days in part because it's just more thorough salting and uh, the it will um, get into the, the, the meat deeper. So I'm going to also dry it. Okay, we're going to weigh this after I patted it dry. And we get 1170 grams. That's almost exactly 12% loss in weight, which is uh, what, what we like. Uh, you can salt it less or more if you wish. If you were to buy lox in the store, it would be quite a bit saltier. They, they salt at 20%. Um, so this is less salty. I prefer less salty. Okay, so... What we're going to do is 
is put this in the refrigerator, just let it uh, sit for a bit, and when it's cooler in the evening, uh, below 60 degrees outside, we're gonna sm uh, cold smoke it overnight, and we'll show you that in a moment. This is a cold smoke generator, and I'm gonna fill it with sawdust, and then light it to start the smoldering process to create the, the smoke, which is because there's no flame and it smolders, it's actually cold, you know, the smoke is not hot. Um, so I'm gonna fill it up with the sawdust that was, that's completely dried out. You can tell it's dry when it's, uh, it's light, in, light in color. So you fill all this up. If you were to light one end, this would smolder for uh, a, up to a couple days. It's amazing. And it holds about a pound, less than a pound of sawdust. So out of one 20 pound bag of pellets, you can do over 20 sessions of uh, cold smoking. Um, what I do, I found is, uh, even though you can smoke for cold smoke for a couple days with this, if you light one end, what I prefer doing is smoke overnight. And I, li I like the, the end and I also like the center. So you have two fronts of smoldering sawdust. The only thing you have to be careful of is you don't want the temperature to rise too much. And uh, you want to do it on cool days and evenings or, not, or nights. Um, you want to uh, do it on days that are and nights that are under 60 degrees. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be cooking the salmon and that's no good. Uh, so I, this comes with a... It has a, a spot where you can put a little candle to get it going and so forth. I think I tried that once. I didn't think it works worked too well. When you put the sawdust in, you want to make sure that these metal ri ridges um, protrude. So you don't have the uh, fire jumping from one uh, trail to another. So that's important. We don't want it to get too hot, to get too many fires going there. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna use lighter fluid because uh, that's basically gonna burn off. We're gonna get this, oops. So that's, that's a little bit of a problem. I don't wanna get too much of it start, started and lit. We're gonna do the end and the center. Of course, you want to do this outside or in your fireplace it's going to be an open flame when it first starts and it will take maybe five ten minutes to uh, stop the flame going out and it just smolders so I'm going to move some of this over so I don't start too much of a Light it. And we'll let that sit and burn a bit. I'm gonna turn it this direction so it doesn't jump over to this side here. The wind's blowing, this, this is a little bit better. So we'll come back in a few minutes and hopefully this, this uh, smoldering is pretty reliable and take it from there. Okay, so this is what I'm using as a smoke chamber for the uh, cold smoking. This is a, um, it's a Little Chief electric smokehouse uh, smoker. This is uh, sold as a hot smoker. It has a heating element in the bottom. You put a pan of, of chips in there and it uh, smokes the chips as well as cooks your, your meat. Um, that's not what I want to do here, but this works perfectly. I've had this for about 25 years. It works perfectly for this purpose of cold smoking because all you need is a chamber to trap the smoke in um, with your, your meat. Uh, and it so happens that this smoke generator, which is, seems to be a bit of a new development, 25 years ago I never came across this. 
but it happens to fit in just nicely, this large one. And I can place it in here on the bottom on that heating element that I'm not going to use. And it gets sufficient air on the bottom to keep that, that sawdust smoldering. And here's the racks with the piece of meat we're gonna, we're gonna smoke. Um, you could use anything. You could use a cardboard box if you wanted to. Um, if you have a, a grill, you can also um, put the smoke generator in there and close the top as long as you have enough um, airflow for, for the smoldering to happen and in a closed space to build up the smoke. Uh, it should work fine. So I'm gonna put this in. And I didn't, didn't really let it, uh, you know, for the hot smoking, you want to let it sit out and, and form what's called a pellicle on the skin. And that's to keep the, uh, some of the, the uh, proteins and so forth when it gets cooked from oozing out. You get a white ooze when you cook it. Um, I don't find that necessary with the cold smoking. So you can take it right out of the bag and put it in, or right out of the brine, wash it off and put it in. We're going to just set it in here. Put the top on. And I'll check it. Uh, in the beginning, I'll check it every... You know, I'll check it after an hour to make sure it's still smoking. But it's pretty reliable. Um, and it will... I've lit at both you know, the center and the end. It will smoke for at least 12 hours. Probably maybe, maybe 18 hours. Um, and we have a place on our porch in case it's raining and so forth, we can still do it. And it really is a wonderful smell to come home and just smell the, smell the smoke while it's smoking or even smell the smoker when you're not smoking, it's nice. So it's a very simple system. And like I said, you don't need one of these, you can use a barbecue, uh, but this works perfect for our situation. Okay, here we are a couple hours later and I'm just going to check to make sure it is smoking properly. I uh, usually don't need to check it at night, so um, we'll look at it now and then look at it again in the morning. Well, we can s you can already smell that it's working. Um, it doesn't feel hot. It's cold, actually. We'll open it up. You see there's a nice bit of... good bit of smoke in there. And feel it and it doesn't feel warm at all and this is going to smoke all night we'll take a look in the morning and it'll be ready okay this is morning time it's uh 15 hours later got a lot of smoking doesn't have to be smoked that much but uh this is what we did it's still cool a lot of smoke in there and Take a look at how much sawdust is left inside. Oh, almost gone. So that's a pretty heavy smoking. Um, and I think probably starting out, maybe use half of that and light one side. It's very forgiving. It's going to be taste great in any case. And now we're going to go and cut it up. Okay, here we have the, the piece smoked and ready to cut. And the way I do it is cut it into two pieces and skin it and then slice. Uh, I'm gonna, I cut down the lateral line, which is right here. It's not in the center here because I've cut the belly off. This, fit, this would have been about this big without the belly being cut off. The reason I'm cutting down that line is that there is some gray uh, fatty uh, tissue that you will see that I like to cut out. Any sharp knife will do. This one actually isn't very sharp at the moment. You see these two, you see the, the texture there. And I want to cut this gray tissue out. Uh, 
that's pretty good. Trim a little bit of it off here. And it's, it's fine to eat. Uh, it just it, it doesn't look quite as nice, the gray. And this, our dog loves it, but it's better to cook it since it's raw because there is a parasite, a bacteria that uh, dogs can get sick from. It's very rare but I don't want to take the chance. It's, no, it's, it's not, not anything that um, humans have any problem with. So we cook, cook the skin before we, we steam it before we give it to our dog. Do the same on this side. You can see how nice, how oily this is, but uh, this is wild king salmon, and it is less oily than farmed salmon by a considerable amount. Both are very good and healthy. We have the great fortune of being able to catch it ourselves and, and make wonderful dishes with it. So I like cutting from the, the rear of the fish, and that is gonna be this side. And so we're gonna do some thin slices. We typically make uh, smoked salmon bagels with cream cheese. We hope that you found this helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new on my channel, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications. You can also ask us questions in the comment section below this video. I always love to answer any questions you have. Thank you so much for joining us here in our kitchen and see you in the next video.